Okay, welcome to the Clock End Talk, and yes, we are live on Podbean, is it? Is that what? Fuck me, I fucking had a balls up. Yeah, Podbean. We are, we moved away from CastBox FM because I was having too many dramas with the live stuff. So um, I said to Tony, let's just check it out, test it out. How are we, buddy? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, would say I'm better after tonight than I was on Sunday. <laughs> I tell you, it was, um, mate, I... I I watched the obviously I watched the game, but I just you know when you turn it on and you think oh, we're going to lose, like what's the point? I'll watch it anyway. But I mate, when we won, I was like, holy fuck, we just beat Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one because I went into the game. I wouldn't say optimistic, but I thought you sort of you don't know what Liverpool have got to play for. And then when I saw our lineup, I thought, okay, he's basically throwing the game especially when I saw they was at full strength because they've not got a game for like a week now. Um, and then I think I was actually, and I actually typed it, I think either just before or just after Mane scored in the group chat. I was like, this is actually disgusting. Like what we was doing in the first <laughs> 25 minutes was shambolic. Like it was, it, I would arguably say it's the worst however many minutes of football I've seen Arsenal play. And I've seen us be, 4-0 down at Anfield after 20 minutes but this was just a joke I, I didn't know what we were trying to do but I was just talking to a friend and he said oh, the second half I had no idea what we were trying to do and I said well, the second half I can understand we were parking the bus first half I, I don't know what we were trying to do because we weren't particularly defending the numbers we were just giving them the ball and then sort of running around all over the place a little bit of luck on our side though like Allison doesn't and I seen the boys in the WhatsApp group, like how much has Allison cost, and he's made that mistake. Look, hey, it was lucky. It was lucky for us, unlucky for them, really. Stupid. Yeah, I mean, look, stupid. I, I would yeah, I, I wouldn't <laughs> put it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it down to luck. It's, it's mistakes they made. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, is it is it lucky if someone else makes a mistake? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I thought for the first goal, Reese pressed well, and for the second goal, Lacker was really alert to it. Uh, I'd seen a still image not too long ago and it was uh, basically he was the only person on the pitch that was moving as Alisson got that ball and I'm always a fan mm. of uh, pressurising the keeper on a bouncing ball because I know keepers are now much better footballers than, than they were previously but they're still not used to a ball awkwardly bouncing them at a dodgy height and I mean what Alisson ended up doing it, I mean I know it was an intended pass for Robertson but it was too short for that. It was too wide of Van Dyke, and it was a bit of nothing. And it's the sort of pass a centre midfielder probably doesn't make. So I'm a big advocate for putting pressure on keepers, especially with bouncing ball. Yeah, yeah. And you're happy with Lana? Uh, yes and no. Um, not really, but I thought he sacked it off for the weekend, which was understandable. We were tenth before a ball was kicked. Uh, realistically, what did he think we were going to do from tenth? Um, mm. probably thought we was going to lose whether we had our best team out or not or the result would be the same whether we had our best team out or not if he thought Liverpool weren't motivated he, he would have thought that team was strong enough to beat them and if Liverpool were motivated that team or our strongest team probably wouldn't have been strong enough so uh, yeah I wasn't happy but I could see why he was doing it yeah yeah it was good to see Nelson get a run out I thought, I thought he played well too I, you know he got the goal but I, I thought he had a good game I thought he'd done all right. I thought it was a bit unfair on him, especially in that first 20, 25 minute period, whatever it was. We were just hammering the ball in behind Robertson and expecting him to chase it. And it was a weird one because they played him right and Pepe on the left. And Pepe is the quicker of the two. So you'd have thought if they're yeah. going to use that tactic, go to Pepe. And it, I saw a little bit of criticism for Reese, but I don't think it was really his fault. What's he supposed to do? The, ball, the ball's getting hammered 60, 70 yards in behind and he's just got to chase it all day and he's not going to get there often. 
I, I can't really blame him for that. I mean, I know he was a mile offside anyway, but he should have done better straight after they scored when he, he tried to cut it back. I mean, my first thought was he should have shot. Um, and then my second thought when I saw it again was the cutback was maybe the right option, but Pepe was, would have had a tap in and there was no one within 10 yards of him. And Reese's ball was so poor. But yeah, after that, I think like the rest of the team, after that for disgusting first 25 or whatever it was, Reese really picked up. But I, f- I felt sorry for him. I can't say it's a poor performance, but I felt sorry for him in the first 20, 25. Rating this performance, and I, I look, I didn't, I didn't catch the the Tottenham game because I was away on holidays, and I only just got back to it yesterday. So, uh, rating this this performance, and then the loss earlier in the week against Tottenham, what's is it is it you know good and an evil, or is it what what, what are we looking at here? The, the, is it two different Arsenal teams, or just bad luck on the day? I don't know. Um... Uh, look, it wasn't, neither of them were champagne performances. I think everyone would be open and honest in saying that. Um, I don't know. But I think Liverpool made us play in a certain way. Uh, you could sort of argue that we didn't have a game plan in either game, either game but Liverpool made us have a game plan of, of pretty much parking the bus. And we did it, and we did it relatively well. They didn't have too many chances where you say, oh, they should score here, this should be a goal. Um, whereas I think the Tottenham game, it was so in between. We were sort of, do we attack? Do we defend? We didn't really do either very well. Um, but then we got hit with a sucker punch a lot like Liverpool did today. I think I, I was convinced on Sunday that if we went 1-0 up and held it for 5-10 minutes, Tottenham would have crumbled. But we go 1-0 up and then about a minute after the game's gone back in play, we give them a goal, much like Liverpool did today. Um, I think the, the performances are, obviously we, we're not as good as Liverpool, but I think the performances are kind of opposite. Danny Sabias, a lot of people have spoke about him. Oh, I've seen on Twitter during the week, you know, he's available for 20, 24 million pounds. I don't know whether that's true or not. Um, he had a good game against Tottenham, did he? And, and what's what's going on here? All of a sudden, he's the he's the guy who we should be going for. It's a difficult one because I, I wouldn't say he was outstanding against Tottenham, but he he's looked a lot better recently since since the restart pretty much well since guendouzi has gone out of the team if we're honest uh, it was always blindingly mm. obvious them two couldn't play together and since guendouzi has been out of the team Sabios has been very good in in almost every game or he's not been poor in any of them i don't think and for 20 to 25 million is that a bad price i don't know no, um, i don't i don't think it is but then i i don't uh, know what I don't know what Arteta's going to do. If he's going to continue playing uh, uh, five at the back with a midfield two, Danny's not going to take Granite's place. And I prefer, I would prefer the, the person next to him to be someone more defensive, which is why I presume we've been linked so strongly with Partey. Um, then the, do we have the luxury of being able to, to spend 25 million on someone who's not going to start? You then look at, okay, mm-hmm. if he goes back to a 4-3-3 or 4-3-2, three, three, or three, two, one, whatever you want to look at it, um, or one, two, however you want to look at it, then could it be a defensive midfielder, Granite and Danny? Maybe, but for me, I would want the the third person alongside a defensive midfielder and, and Granite to be someone who affects the game more, more at the top end of the pitch and gets a lot of goals and gets a lot of assists. And I said, I think Danny's been controlling games, have been excellent recently, but he doesn't, he, he's not a threat. And look, he's only 22, 23, which people forget, and maybe that will come. But I think for the here and now, I'm not really sure where he fits into to what would be my ideal style of play. And there's nothing against him as a player. He's obviously got ability. You've, I don't know if you've caught Arteta's press conference after today's game, but there's lots going around at the moment about his comments. He, he basically you know, said, said to the board, I need some money to make this uh, this team obviously a, a competing team. Um, and we are talking, obviously, Arsenal yeah, I mean, for those who are tuning in. I, I've read what into it mean? a lot different than everyone else, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, like he, um, they said to, like, I, I watched it live, and, and the question was, do you have money to spend? And he said, I don't know. Well, one, he generally may not have asked about that yet. Or two, if he already knows, and they said, yeah, look, mate, you're going to have 500 million, he's not going to come out and say it because it makes prices go up. Everyone knows that. So maybe he doesn't know, maybe the money's there, maybe it's not. We don't know. He's saying he don't know. 
And then they said to him, oh, will it be a harder job without money? And he said, yeah, well, of course. That's obvious. The team needs players. Of course it is, yeah. Like, yeah, loads of people have come out and said, oh, he's fired an autom- automate him at the board or he's, do you know what I mean? He's he put pressure on the board. Well, he hasn't. He said what's blindingly obvious. Is this current team good enough? No. So would it be easier with better players? Yes. Like, I've, as I said, a lot of people, and maybe it's just the way I look at things, but a lot of people have said, oh, he's firing shots at the board, and, and I don't see it as that. And to be honest, I'd be very surprised if they've not already had them conversations about what sort of level of players they're going to bring in or who they're going to bring in. Mm. I think last week he, he sort of said we've identified targets and we've got players that we know want to play for the club. And then this week it, it's saying this. I mean, it's a difficult game because you, you need to play your cards close to your chest. And as I said, imagine he come out and said, oh, we've got X amount, and then suddenly everyone becomes more expensive. It's, I, I don't know what I expect in yeah. the transfer window, but, but Arteta is very uh, tactical in, in his interviews. Um, has been since day one. And so I, I, I said last week on the show, actually, obviously you wasn't here, that I don't really, not I don't listen to them because I watch them all, but I don't really take in what he says in these interviews because he's very good at saying the right thing at the right time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, the politician face. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The, uh, you know, look, obviously parties are around the 42 and then they're talking Sabias 20 something. You know, that's still a good bloody window. I, I don't yeah, know I if mean, I agree with I mean. those two players, but yeah, <laughs> definitely party yeah, I mean, look, by the sounds of it. Well, a lot of people would probably disagree with me on this, but if you can, if you can get. Obviously, I'm not saying a straight swap with Real Madrid, but if you sell Guendouzi for 40 and get Ceballos in for 25, so you've got Ceballos and 15 million for Guendouzi, for me, that's, that's a great deal. I mean, as I said, it might not be yeah, with the same club, but I mean, the, the net overall. You've got players that are kind of similar. Uh, there's Danny's, as I said, he's not as old as people think. There's only a couple of years between them. <sighs> people talk about Guendouzi having a very high ceiling. I probably think Danny's is. Yeah, my only worry with Danny in England is physicality. I, I think, look, we've seen him play great final balls and they've ended up being second assists, so he doesn't get the stats that, that, that people want. We've seen him get forward. I think he's already scored more goals to the club than Guendouzi has, and he's probably made about a third of the appearances. So for me, I think Danny can offer more going forward than Guendouzi is. The only, the only worry for me in England is Guendouzi has a lot better engine that Ceballos just doesn't have. But for me, Ceballos... Getting Sabayas on 15 million for Guendouzi, which is sort of the numbers we've been led to believe, I would take that deal. And as I said, I know a lot mm. of others probably wouldn't, but then I don't particularly rate Guendouzi as high as most other people. You, you've been known in the past to watch a little bit of Spain, Spain the football from Spain. What, what's his party guy like? Uh, he's one of them. He, he can do he can do a lot of things. People see him as a defensive midfielder, but. He, he's got an engine or he, he's fit enough to get up and down. He's not really going to trouble the, the goal scorers, but he can sit as a DM or he can do a bit more of a box-to-box job. Uh, he, he's played a lot of games at right back for, for Atletico. And I think what you could expect to see is, especially if we stay as a back five, if we've got a right back that's going to bomb on, he can cover the right-hand side, similar to how Granite covers the left-hand side with... Um, with when Saka earlier in the season, when Saka was bombing on, Granite sort of covered that side of things. And I think mm. what could happen is if the right hand side goes, Partey uh, slips into that sort of right hand side of position and Granite takes care of the middle of the pitch. And vice versa on the other side, left back goes, Granite shifts across and, and Partey looks after the middle of the pitch. Um, that, that's sort of what I would expect to see. He's, he's a physical presence, he's, he keeps the ball. I mean, I saw a stat earlier, I didn't actually even open the tweet, I just saw the headline. Um, that, that said he's made more er- individual errors leading to goals than, than something, as I said, I didn't open the tweet. So he, I'm not saying he's the complete player and the perfect player, but then but then no one is. He's probably, uh, yeah, look, I don't know much about him, but I, I, I get the I get the opinion and, and just what I'm reading is that he's going to be there to take a bit of pressure away from Grenner. Um, yeah, that's, look, he, that's why he's I, a defensively. Defensively. I think you're probably looking at, and this isn't a direct comparison, but we sort of brought Torreira at 22, I think he was, as someone who could be something. I think with Partey, you're looking at the the finished. He's he's 27, I think. He is the end Torreira, if you know what I mean. Yeah. 
so I, I think that, that I, look, it's not the best comparison, but it's sort of yeah, no, you might yeah. there about. more experience, more a bit more experience, and, and yeah, whatnot. and a bit more complete, a bit more rounded. Obviously, he's played in the bigger leagues for for longer. What one worry is that he is probably in the the best and one of the most defensive sides on in the world, and. How many, like, this is not a comparison at all, but you look at defenders that have left Burnley that they've been sensational and they get a 25 million move somewhere and then suddenly they don't look that great because their defensive system is so good. And that would be one concern I'd have about Partey. I mean, I think he's a guy that uh, Michael Keane went from Burnley to Everton for 25 million. And for at least a year, he looked a mm. shambles because at Burnley he had everything around him and at Everton suddenly they're not such a defensive team. And, and Burnley lost Michael Keane and Tarkovsky came in and it looked like exactly the same player. But a month before, Tarkovsky was probably rated as about a million pound player. And suddenly he just slots into that system so well. It's the same as, I don't know, Kieran Trippier. Great crosser of a ball. Yeah, yeah, decent yeah. right back. Never, never been seen as great defensively. Suddenly goes to Atletico and he just slots into that defensive unit. And the defensive unit is still great because it's the unit that does the job, not an individual player. Not the player. Um, and and yeah, that would yeah. be, I'm not saying it's a big worry because we've seen Partey be good for a number of years, but it would be a slight concern for me. As I said, other people might not share that and, and that's fine. Okay, just quickly before we go, um, I just want your thoughts uh, on, and I have to talk about it because it's been news all week, uh, well, the last two days or something. I think it was trending. Yesterday on Twitter, I was told, you know, I'm talking Arsenal fan TV. The boys, uh, you know, and I, I no, no disrespect to the lads, are uh, all good, and I always support any Arsenal content that's out. But the boys got themselves into a little bit of trouble yesterday. Yeah, I mean, look, Claude knew what he was saying. Uh, and, and a lot of people around the world say, say I don't understand the offence because it's not a stereotype used where, where they're from. And, and that's fair enough, but 100% Claude knew what he was saying. Um, his excuse for me is worse than anything else. I think if he'd have come out and said, look, I'm a man of a certain age, that's the sort of language I've been hearing my whole life from my friendship group, my parents, even just general people in the area where I live. I think everyone would have said, okay, yeah, you're, you're, you're sort of a bit old and maybe not with the times, but we get it. Mm. Um, but his excuse is, is just absolutely ridiculous. And for me, that's made things 10 times worse. And it was interesting, they only actually started to lose sponsors and stuff when they came up with the excuse. Um, look, obviously, it, it's, it's opened a can of worms because there's been other things said on that channel down the years that they may be seen as racist. Are they, racist. Are they particularly offensive? Probably not. Um, but, but now you've got rid of one person for saying something that a lot of people think is fine. As I said, I... I don't because I, I know what he meant. Uh, but a lot of people mm. think what he said is fine. But now they've got rid of someone for that. Does it open the can of worms? Where you Because well, I think in the same game, I've seen a, a clip. Troop said, oh, Harry Kane didn't get booked because he was white. Does that now get looked into? Whereas before, no one would have given a shit. Do you know what I mean? They might not have agreed, and I certainly yeah, don't yeah, agree, yeah. But, but no one would have cared. But now does that get looked into? Uh, someone else said uh, a few months ago, said, oh, Cronky should be deported. He should. Why didn't he fuck off back to America and Usman off? Uh, not Usman off. Sorry, uh, San Lehi. Can he fuck off back to Spain? Can he get deported? And it's like, mm. well, they're, they're not racist things. Well, I, I don't seem them to be. But but as I said, you you kind of opened the can of worms now. Look, I I'm not defending Claude in any way because I don't like him. But uh, I don't want to say hard done by because he knows what he said. I just think the the apology is has actually got him in more trouble than than what he's actually said. Um, obviously, that was the video, video that came out. Yeah, I looked at the video the, the next day and I was oh, look, I've said some, and as you know, I've said some fucking, you know, some wild shit in my time because, I, you know, that's just the way I am, I guess. But to sit back and say that you didn't say it or you didn't mean it in that way, look, come on, you got to own it. you got to own up. And you just apologise for for the you know for how how it come across, but you can't you can't bullshit a bullshitter, you know. Like you, you just can't. Like if if and that's where I think the boys have literally fucked up. Like 
Yeah, yeah I, feel, I actually think that there's very little problems if he comes out and, and as I said, says, look, where, where I'm from, it's a common phrase. doesn't mean it's right, but that in the heat of the moment when you, you've been surrounded by a certain language your whole life, that, that's, do you know what I mean? When you're, in, when you're angry at a certain time, that's what you come out with. And, and look, maybe I need yeah, to go and yeah. re-educate myself and, and whatnot. I apologise. But even in his apology video today, he apologised for causing offence, but he still doesn't own up, up, up to it. Um, Arsenal have apparently come out and had yeah. their say. There's quotes from them in pretty much every national newspaper and from every major journalist saying that they distance themselves from Arsenal fan TV and Claude doesn't own a membership, so they can't ban him. Um, mm, okay. Is it something that yeah, is right. it something that someone should get banned for? I don't know because look, I don't. I don't know. Maybe because it's not me that's offended by it. I, Racism should be a lifetime ban. There's, there's no two ways about that. But is that enough for someone to never be allowed to go to football again? And this is coming from someone that don't like him. I literally yeah. hate him more oh, than man. the rest of Arsenal fan TV. Uh, he's, he said to me, who's the worst? For me, it's him. I, I literally can't stand the bloke. And not because of his Arsenal mm. fan TV stuff from other stuff I see when I'm at games. But... Um, is that it's a difficult one because as I said for me racism should be a lifetime ban because there's no place for it and there's also no need for it but as I said for you is that enough for someone to never be allowed to go and watch their their club their passion again I don't think so but then that contradicts what I've just said I look and I I'll be honest I didn't even really understand the racism side around the comment um, I actually, it wasn't until I seen it on Twitter and I, I went, oh, okay, what's this mean? And then I had a look into it. When I, 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 I personally didn't, for, I mate, would never, over here in Australia, I've never really um, mentioned that, like a DVD to, you know, anything like that, to that cult. Yeah, I mean. So I don't, yeah, it's, it's you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, it's a strange one because ninety percent of the world probably don't know, but there has been fans that have been fans that have been done before. I think there's a West Ham and a Millwall fans when they're playing Tottenham, they were they were shouting similar sort of things, and and I think there's yeah. people been arrested yeah. for it. It's 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 straight. I mean, especially for for me because it, you do hear it in London a lot. The DVD, the guys selling the legal DVDs are always Asian, um, or not yeah, always, okay. but the majority of the time they're Asian, and especially obviously I spend a lot of time in Spain and. Uh, I don't know if this will mean anything to you, but most of our listeners will have heard of the looky looky guys who tend to be African guys on the beach selling sunglasses, hats, basically any old shit. Um, mm. And I know Lord Sugar, or Alan Sugar, sorry, got in a got in a bit of trouble a few years ago because there was a, I think it was a, it was an African team at the World Cup. I think it was Cameroon, but I might be wrong. And he took their team photo and said, oh, "I met these guys on the beach last year. They were trying to sell me hats," and he got in trouble for that. But in in, so in Spain, you get the, the tend to be African guys selling that sort of stuff, and then DVDs coming around, and it is always Asian. So for me, the two places where I spend most of my time being England and Spain, it's something I see sort of, not non-stop, but it's something that's very evident. Um, yeah, oh, I get it now. Totally get it now. Yeah, now no, I but that's what I'm saying. Because there's, there's <laughs> he was he's yeah. saying that he didn't even know that stereotype, and I'm telling you, there's absolutely no chance that's true. He he knew. Yeah, yeah. What, nah. What that to was. to make that comment, you've you've got to know what that what that means. So uh, yeah, for me, you've known. <laughs> you've known. I wouldn't even make that comment because I wouldn't even I wouldn't even link the two together. You know what I mean? So it wouldn't come up in my conversations. But anyway, yeah. And, and um, no, look, good luck to him and Laura. Don't so. think it's offensive. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's right. sad, isn't it, that we've just beat the champions two one. Yeah, but it's sad we've just beat the champions 2-1 and we're talking about some old uneducated bloke saying something and, and whether it's racist or not. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, I had to bring it up because obviously there's a lot of people talking about it yesterday. So, um, But yes, we have beaten the champions. We beat them 2-1 and that is Liverpool. It's been an interesting week. Um, a, a loss against Tottenham, which eh, probably would have liked to win that game and lose to Liverpool. But hey, <laughs> it is what it is. So happy days. Tony, I'll see you next week, mate. We'll jump on and do a full podcast, huh? Right, cheers.
Good on you, mate. Cheers, buddy, and thank you, everyone, for listening, and you can get us at clockend underscore talk on Twitter. Thank you, and goodbye, good night. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?